Selwyn here from winterength.com. On this video, I'll actually be getting my first impressions and unboxing the Titan Fitness Farmer Walker handles that I was able to purchase over the Black Friday sales in November of 2019. Titan cops a lot of flack for their shipping procedures and policies. Uh, here's a quick video of me just going around the box showing you the exact conditioning of how it arrived at my house. Uh, nothing too crazy and again it's not completely on Titan's fault when we're shipping uh, things that are like 100 pound boxes. Again carriers that deliver these boxes don't necessarily treat them with the same amount of respect that we would like. So with all that being said I think the package arrived pretty well in good condition. You notice one of the seams that looks like the staples uh, started to pull out of the out of the cardboard and someone did come along there and re-tape the box up. So hopefully nothing is missing. We'll see what happens when we cut open the box and find out if there's any parts that aren't there anymore. Uh, so what's actually really cool is they've actually double boxed the Farmer's Walker handles, which is really nice. You know, so there is that outer shell that did take a little bit of a beating, but within that box, we've actually have another big cardboard box inside that doesn't look to be as damaged at all. Uh, the staples kind of held in place as much as possible. So I think Titan's really stepping up their game. Uh, you'll see here when we go inside of the box that so they've put a little bit of styrofoam. There's probably a lot to be uh, wanting with the way they have packages up, to be honest with you. They could have put a bit more uh, styrofoam in there, but for the most part, we're talking about pretty heavy metal pieces that would take a lot to damage, and I'm pretty much going to bang these up outside anyway, so not too big of a concern. Well, that zip tie didn't last. But it's good to see a couple of zip ties to keep it all together, I guess. So now I just unwrapped it. There was pretty much no assembly, nothing had to be done, just take off all the plastic wrap and unpack all the foam. That probably took the most part of it, just trying to figure out how to get that plastic bag off of it without having to take a knife through it. With all the rack holes on the side, it looks like it was just the same post that they would use for a 3x3 rack at Titan. Uh, the, the same thick steel that they use, very durable. Uh, it seems nice. The powder coating feels really good. I have a older T3 rack, uh, which the they have the smooth powder coating on the outside and this one they have that kind of textured powder coating. I think they've uh, increased the quality of their powder coating. Uh, going along the sides, we see the welds of the posts and the handles seem to be nice and smooth. Uh, when we compare that to the Titan rack that I have, they've definitely stepped up the game with their quality of workmanship, I think. Uh, I'm not a welder by trade or no, I've never welded anything together, but just the aesthetics of the welds look quite nice from, from my uneducated perspective so that's going to be good i do have one concern with the way the adjustable handles work um, generally when the when a farmer walk gets heavy you're going to have those weights quite close to you so i see that that d-ring detent potentially causing issues hitting you in the leg as you walk back and forth but we'll see what happens when i actually put this to use maybe it'll stay out of the way if we put it in uh, if i have those d hooks at behind me all the time. Maybe that's going to help with that. Uh, only time will tell to see the durability of this, but I can't see anything really breaking. The only thing I can see getting shaky will be the, uh, the, the feet, the little metal guards that rest on the ground, especially if we're dropping them and banging them on the ground. There might be some issues there, but it's still that same, same thick steel that the rest of it's made out of. But hey, time will tell to see if this is worth it. And at the price point, I think Titan has hit it out of the park. I'll put a review probably in a year from now, an actual review after using this for quite a while so that you can get some some actual data points and some actual feedback as to how this works after actual heavy usage over about a year. Um, the knurling on the handles feels nice. It's not too aggressive. It's definitely not passive. It's not a bare steel. Uh, there is some knurling there, which is nice compared to other farmer handles implements. I do like the adjustability of the handle height, so it'll accommodate uh, what type of difficulty you're wanting to do as well as uh, different height lifters, so that's nice. Right now, at least, I'm not a big fan of how they've implemented the adjustment detent there to keep that handle in place. But again, time will tell to see if that actually gets in the way or whatnot. Uh, 
there's a little bit of information about the farmer handles. They're rated at 50 pounds each. I haven't put on a scale yet. Uh, they're both also rated to hold a capacity of 500 pounds each. Um, just so you know, my deadlift is currently at 495. So that's two hands on a deadlift, so I doubt I'm going to be able to test the weight capacity of this anytime soon. So when I do hit to that point, it's probably going to be time for an upgrade. Because at that point, if I'm able to farmers walk a thousand pounds, well, in excess of a thousand pounds, uh... Yeah, I think the 45 pound plates that I have to put on here is going to be, there's not going to be enough room for the amount of 45 pound plates I have to load up with. Uh, I did wish I could have bought the frame attachment at the same time as this because it was a little cheaper. I'll throw the pricing up for what I got it for anyway, and then the regular street pricing there again. With your purchases, I would highly recommend to wait for Black Friday. I did wait around for a couple of months before getting these on Black Friday. Unfortunately, the frame attachments were out of stock, so I wasn't able to acquire those when I bought this bought this set. So maybe down the line they come back in stock, or I'm thinking I can use a couple of 2x4s and make a frame attachment, uh, that way connecting the two posts, or even using the, the pinholes on the side there to join it somehow. Again, nothing uh, major right now, but first impressions, I think it's cool. I picked them up. It feels quite solid. Um, I'll do a little bit of walking around with it uh, to see how it feels with some weight in the hand and we'll save some verdicts for a year from now. So I thought I'd give you guys some quick tips as to how to get started with a farmer walks if you've never done it before. I think is this as a quick rundown, nothing crazy in depth or anything like that. Uh, just a couple of tips that I picked up while at the training hall up at uh, Thousand Oaks. So one thing you want to do is uh, first off starting with the warm-ups. So warming up you probably want to do some uh, light cardio or some walking at the very least and then maybe some body weight squats and maybe 40% uh, of your wonder at max squats just to get the blood flowing because this will be a quite uh, leg intensive uh, exercise. The other thing you want to do is uh, just make sure your grip and hands are kind of nicely warmed up so do a little bit of light holding. Uh, start off with the empty farmer walks and just do a couple of rounds of light walking just to get the, the blood flowing and whatnot. I wouldn't worry about anything else, but you definitely don't want to tax yourself too much before you start doing some farmer walks. Uh, the next thing comes up too is how you want to set up the actual the actual farmer walk handles themselves. Uh, I like to do a little arrow formation so you can see here they're not exactly parallel, they're kind of arrowed in. Uh, just so it's kind of, A, it's mental, so it points you to where you want to go, and then B, your hands will naturally want to curl in a little bit as the weight gets heavy, so you're not trying to force, the weight isn't trying to force you in, you're already starting off in that inwards position, and that just helps with that grip, and helps with making it a little bit easier to do uh, when the weight starts to get heavy. <clears throat> and you always obviously want to line up everything in the center of the stand, so you really want to make sure that the you're in the middle of it and everything's kind of as symmetrical as possible before you get started. And how far apart they're going to be depends on your body structure, but generally uh, you're not going to obviously hold them out here because you're not going to be able to do that when the weight gets heavy. They're going to be as close to your sides as possible. So when you come down, they're going to be pretty much touching your thighs. So I'm just going to go through the grip setup and the stance setup. This is probably one of the more important things about the movement because obviously if you get this wrong, it's going to be very difficult to continue on with the walk or you're probably going to drop it as is the case is probably going to happen. Uh, with the grip, <clears throat> you're probably going to start off gripping like that. You really want to grip as overemphasized as possible. If anything, you want to do a grip like this so that as the weights, as the fatigue starts to set in, it gives the weight something to roll into until you get to the fingertips. As the fatigue sets in, it's going to roll slowly roll down your hand. So if we give the the bar as much room as possible to move down, it'll give you those extra couple of meters or feet to keep walking without dropping them on the ground. So you start off like that on both grips, and then you want to line up so everything's in the center, just like you want to keep everything in the center of gravity. Here you want to line up so your shins are in line with your hands. So you start off like that, 
and really cranking in on that grip and you really want to work on that as a technique even when the weight's light. Um, I personally also will start off with a slightly bladed stance so we have one foot in front of the other. This way, because it is a walking exercise, as soon as you pick the weight up, you want to be taking a first step. You don't want to stand up and walk. So you want to be doing this. So you want to be take your first step as you stand up. You don't want to be doing this. Uh, because if you deadlift the weight up and start walking, uh, that's A, that's wasted time and wasted energy. Standing the weight up. Uh, think of a sprinter. When they start sprinting, they're not standing up and then running. They're standing up as they run forward. So you want to think of that when you're moving forward because the whole goal is to move as far as possible, as quickly as possible. So the final piece of the puzzle was when you stand up, you want to shrug your shoulders as high as possible and look uh, straight ahead to where the finish line is or wherever the goal is. You don't, don't look down, don't start off like that. You want to look up, head forward and shoulders as high as possible because uh, inevitably the weight's going to drop and what this is doing is it's giving your body some leeway before it's going to ultimately fail and drop the weight. So if we, if we take the worst possible position where we're just gripping with our fingertips and shoulders as low as possible, there's nowhere else for this to go except drop on the floor. But if we start off with the, that good overemphasized grip and we start off up here, our shoulders can slowly lower as the weight gets heavy and the grip will slowly and the handles will slowly roll out of our hands and that should give us a couple of extra feet a couple of extra meters that might be the difference between winning or losing your race because i gripped them in three different positions on the handle uh, one forward one middle and one at the back if anything you want to grip it towards the middle and back because you notice when it is obviously forward you know what that because the weight's tipping your back and it's going to be pulling you backwards. When If you're just doing for a static hold, obviously in the middle is going to be great because it's all well balanced. But if we're talking about moving forward and walking with this implement, you want to have the center of gravity slightly in front of you so that it's pulling you forward and forcing you to walk up and keep with those steps. So when you pick it up, find the center balance of the implement if you can practice with it. Um, figure out exactly where to hold it so you get that fine balance between it tipping too forward and hitting the ground and being backwards and not allowing not giving you that little bit of advantage so that you can walk forward and it's pulling you forward almost and finally with the gait of walking you notice uh, they'll take a lot of small steps that's just to take away the stress of uh, the weight is to reduce the load much like we don't walk with giant steps um, it, like we wouldn't lunge our way to the kitchen we just walk with a regular gait when the weight gets heavier we want to dissipate the energy as much as possible so taking short little steps usually like heel toe is a good way to strike that balance between getting somewhere and the weight being too heavy um, obviously quick steps are better you want to focus on really shuffling those feet forward and leaning forward as much as you can again to get that advantage of pushing that weight that center of gravity in front of your body so you're driving yourself forward and you're almost falling forward and using your feet to catch you so you can get across the the starting line the finish line as quickly as possible so those are a couple of first uh, impressions and initial thoughts about the the titan farmer the farmer handles by titan fitness again a really budget option one of the cheapest options to get into the game of farmer handles and strongman implements one thing that to keep in mind is i do want to see how this locking handle keeps in position during the walks as the weight gets heavy We're pretty lightweight today we're just kind of testing out getting going through some initial testing of it seems to be sturdy enough dropping it on the concrete I'm pretty sure the concrete's going to break before this thing does but we'll give it a year and we'll see what happens after the end of it hopefully the quick tips help you get started with farmer walks I think they're a great exercise to implement if you can uh, if you don't have something like a farmer handle you can obviously use anything heavy dumbbells kettlebells even if you have two barbells just load up weights on each side and walk with them um, suitcase carries are good where you just have one-sided one-sided weight on each hand that'll definitely help with 
uh, developing that core. The one thing that this is really great at is developing core strength as well as leg strength and it's also a hidden calf exercise because what are we pushing a lot of that weight off of is the calf when we're trying to go forward as quickly as we can. So hopefully those tips help you out in the future. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. This has been Selwyn from Wind Strength and remember, a better life through strength. One thing to keep in mind is this will definitely tear up your palms and the skin on the inside of your hands. Uh, this is the one exercise where I'm actually, well, I will actually frequently tear calluses just because of the way the weight, it, the bar is in your hands. It's obviously going to slip. It's not like other movements where you can kind of, uh, the bar stays static in your hand. Uh, chalk will help, but it'll only do so much. Uh, definitely use chalk when the weight starts to get heavy, you start feeling it slip. That's something uh, I would definitely recommend. If there's knurling on the handles, that's great. If there isn't, that's fine. They're both going to tear up your hands equally as much. Um, I wouldn't recommend using any gloves or anything like that, just because it adds another layer for it to slip and it'll actually decrease your ability to grip that handle that well. So just kind of live with the tearing hands. That's really all you can do. Maybe throw some band-aids on it, uh, th carry around some isopropyl alcohol so you can spray down anything you might get blood on, and just wash your hands.